A dragonfly's wings are just one-tenth the mass of a single raindrop, and they're constantly damaged by wind and collisions. But they stay intact. How? Because if there's a damage in some part of that network, there are many, many different routes, many, many different ways to get from point A to point B. This is called a redundant network. Coral skeletons and leaf veins have them too. Water needs to keep flowing, and sugars need to come back from photosynthesis to other parts of the plant. So it's really important when there's a tear or an insect takes a bite or some kind of damage that these networks don't just shut down. Ruth DeFries wrote a book about how we can solve complex issues with nature as our guide. I was literally sending in the final manuscript that week in March when all hell broke loose with COVID. We think about our modern civilization as so insulated from these sorts of shocks, but, uh, but here we are. We're not, uh, we're not insulated. In fact, we're very vulnerable. Nature is the most complex system uh, there is. Uh, and has survived for billions of years. Meanwhile, human civilization as we know it has been around for less than 10,000 years. To survive future shocks like the ones nature is adapted to, some researchers believe our best hope lies in imitation. In general, there's a lot of bios going around. Bio-utilization, biophilia. Biomimicry is the, the conscious emulation of nature's genius. Though it's an ancient idea with roots in indigenous cultures, it's a pretty new term. It's about looking at the context and, and the problem through the scientific methodology of biomimicry thinking and applying it to whatever problem we have. Here's one engineer in Boston who did just that. Before COVID-19 hit, Richard Novak was building technologies that aid drug development. Well, all of a sudden things just pivoted to, well, dang, there's this pandemic, what can we do? In mid-March, the local medical center reached out. And basically said, you know, we need swaps. We are running out. Everyone was running out because one of the main manufacturers of diagnostic nasal swaps was located in northern Italy, an epicenter of viral spread at the time. And really impacted the, the global supply chain. Not the most redundant network. So Richard's team needed a design that could be produced quickly at scale. I was looking at these swaps like, well, we don't really need this fuzzy tip. You're not pulling out water, you're pulling out mucus. You can get away with a much rougher surface. That's when he started thinking about cat tongues. Cats, unlike dogs, actually have a very different way of drinking. And whereas dogs kind of like, they just lapping over like, kind of almost flick their tongues up. Um, cats actually have these, uh, these papillae that, that um, it's almost like wicking. They kind of trap the fluid and, and then goes in, but they actually can then deliver it very quickly to, um, to their fur, right, so when they, when they uh, groom themselves. So that was actually really important for, for the design of the swab, which was, you know, you can collect the sample, but you also have to then release it into whatever the destination is. That thinking and the collaborative effort behind it led to this design, which has since been licensed and distributed to hospitals. Swabs have been around for decades and decades, but now there's been there's this massive amount of innovation in a, in a completely boring space, historically speaking. In nature, if you have, let's say, a tree that falls down in a forest, all of a sudden, all the little seedlings can start growing. It's a different species, it's the understory that can kind of take over, different flowers, different insects, right? It, it kind of rejuvenates. The whole science behind biomimicry is being able to tap into that biological wisdom. And so to ask nature is to, to seek a solution to a functional problem, find that strategy that maybe we overlooked. And it seems humanity's functional problems may soon overwhelm us if we don't change course. Even when we do come out of this pandemic, maybe with some help from cat tongue testing swabs, we'll still have to deal with the fact that we've altered 70% of the planet's land surface and compromised two thirds of its oceans. As a result, 20% of all species are facing near-term extinction, and our world is warming. The Biomimicry Institute is applying and supporting nature-inspired solutions that not only service in the short term, but also sustainably create conditions conducive to life across agriculture, energy, architecture, sanitation, textiles, and transportation. 
life is all about giving back more than it takes. It's about balance, or at least striving to get into that balance. For researchers like DeFries, stabilizing ourselves in the face of future shocks requires us to respect our interdependence with the natural world. We might think we're disconnected from nature in our modern urban world, but we're not. We depend on nature for food, for water, for uh, taking care of our wastes, for air, for everything. And the more uh, connected we are, the more we become a complex system, which is more and more like nature. And in that complexity, humanity could find the resilience in its own nature in the years to come.